Biden is headed to Cambodia for a summit of world leaders, going straight back out to business, taking the world stage after Democrats beat expectations in the midterms, despite what were frankly poor poll numbers and approval numbers for President Biden. I'm joined now by our senior data reporter, Harry Enton, to understand how this, this happened, right? Because his approval rating was not good, and usually at a midterm, our president's isn't, but his was bad, and yet... And yet, and, y and yet, and yet, and yet, you know, if you look back over the past few midterms where you had a president's approval rating under 50%, we're talking Donald Trump, we're talking Barack Obama, we're talking Bill Clinton, we're talking seat losses in the House, 40, 50, sometimes upward of 60 seats. That is not going to be the case this time around. Democrats are probably going to have a house seat loss of less than 10 if the current numbers hold. It's unbelievable. It's such a historical anomaly. And, you know, when you dig deeper into the numbers, in fact, if you look among the 10 percent or so of the electorate that somewhat disapproved of Joe Biden's job performance, they actually voted for Democratic candidates. This whole thing is sort of off the hook and just really, frankly, odd. Right. I mean, it's, it's sort of <laughs> it's the hockey stick of elections. Okay, but in fact, when you look at this, and you go back, what, nearly a century, this still stands out. It is still stands out. It's, it, again, this is one of the best performances for a president's party in a first midterm. At this point, if, if the numbers hold, they're not going to lose any Senate seats. They're going to lose probably less than 10 House seats. That's only happened a few times. You can see on your screen right now, we're talking FDR, we're talking JFK, we're talking George W. Bush. That is it. That is it. This is basically four times in a century, and I can assure you that the rest of those times, obviously, we didn't have polling at 34, but the president's approval rating was above 60 percent. This is this is amazing. Right. I mean, just to go back to 20 years ago, 2002, right, you were coming off of 9-11. You were right there. Were, there were very specific extenuating circumstances. Right. Uh, this extenuating circumstance may be election dialism and Donald Trump. I mean, we don't know, but that, I, I, I think that Donald Trump's unpopularity, uh, basically, you know, there was 20 percent of the electorate that didn't like either one, and you would have thought that if you didn't like Joe Biden, you would vote overwhelmingly for Republican candidates, but in fact, that didn't happen. It tainted. It, it tainted, tainted them all. All right, now, you've got the, uh, the former president about to make an announcement next week that he thought it was going to be like, with thunderous applause, announcing his, his bid to, to run again. Maybe he still does it, but obviously, it's a very, very different environment. A lot of talk about President Biden, whether he'll run, and overwhelming kind of perception in certain Democratic circles that he shouldn't. He's just too old. Pass the baton. The data. You know, I recall the same exact argument being made four years ago. Joe Biden's over 75. He should run. The electorate had either concerns or were extremely unenthusiastic about it. I think it's 62 percent that was an NBC News poll there. You can see it had reservation or very uncomfortable. And guess what happened? He got four years older. He got four years older. And he got two years older during the campaign. He's now considerably older. But back in 2020, he won the presidential primary and won the presidency. So I don't really take these concerns too much. It's something theoretical, but when it comes to the ballot, they actually voted for Joe Biden. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we will have more on the president's thinking about the next two years in Washington with a live report from Cambodia, which, of course, is where he is. That's host of the Summit of World Leaders that I just mentioned. Plus, the latest on a close House race few saw coming. Pro-Trump firebrand Lauren Boebert fighting for her political career. It is barely the season, and you've already got three new Sirius XM Christmas channels to unwrap. Jingle Jams plays holiday hip-hop and R&B. Contemporary instrumentals and smooth vocals are on Cool Jazz Christmas. And you don't have to wait to open Kids Christmas, a channel custom-made for the little ones. Find over 20 holiday channels on the SXM app, free with all trials and popular plans. Rare and colorful gemstones formed in the earth. Expert hands selecting only the best. Designers creating jewelry inspired by each stone's uniqueness. At Shane Company, we're passionate about gemstones. We have holiday gifts with a full spectrum of natural, colorful gemstones. Peach Morganite, Tanzanite, London Blue Topaz, Red Garnet, and more. Throughout the year, Tom Shane travels to Bangkok, the gemstone capital of the world to handpick the best rubies in over a dozen colors of sapphires. He then has the stones expertly cut to bring out their brilliance and beauty. Our stunning gemstone jewelry makes a magical gift. We're open seven days a week, so come in, meet with one of our friendly jewelry consultants and leave with a beautiful gift, or get fast and free shipping when you order online. Your gift will be treasured forever. Now you have a friend in the jewelry business, Shane Company and Shaneco.com.
Hey guys, looking to score a few extra points by giving the perfect gift this holiday season? I've got two great ideas. Certainly